good morning. We're glad you've joined us for the Sunday morning service of Tusculum Hills Baptist Church, a caring and vibrant church that offers God's help to all people. We invite you to join us now for a special message. Hi, my name is Craig Rochelle. I'm the pastor of LifeChurch.tv, and so much of what I'm doing today is the result of how God used the Gideons to get God's Word into my hand to transform my life. When I was in college, my fraternity got in a lot of trouble. I was the ringleader in many ways of the trouble. And so as a PR move, even as a non-Christian, I decided to start a Bible study. The only problem was I didn't own a Bible. And the day that we were scheduled to have our Bible study, I was walking from one class to another when a gentleman, a Gideon, offered me a free green New Testament Bible. I can remember distinctly thinking, wow, if there is a God, he must have just worked through that guy. And sure enough, through the Bible, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, I read that you're saved by grace through faith. It's not of yourselves. It is the gift of God so no one can boast. And that's when spiritually I was born anew, forgiven of all my sins by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ. To all those who serve in the Gideons, thank you for investing in me. For all those who are investing in the Gideons, thank you for making a difference in thousands and thousands of stories just like mine. The living word is active, powerful. Thank you for getting it out. Isn't it amazing how powerful the Word of God is? A man who's lost in trouble, about to get kicked out of school, had a simple prayer that he probably didn't even realize who he was praying to. And that very day, he received a copy of God's Word, took it back and read that one verse, and God saved him. His name is Craig Rochelle. Craig Rochelle is now the pastor of Life Church TV. They meet in 27 different locations across the United States. On any given Sunday, he has over 53,000 worshipers. He got with some developers, and they developed a Bible app called YouVersion. Many of you that have a smartphone, perhaps you've downloaded that, and maybe you use that on a regular basis. Since he developed that, they have now been able to provide 1,308 languages, 1,908 different versions, and there have been over 385 million downloads. And as you know, if you have it, it is a free download. He could sell it and be an extremely rich man. But he said this, I choose to pay it forward because the very first copy of God's word I received was free to me. Thank you. You see, it's because someone like you invested in the word of God and someone like the Gideons were able to place it into his hand so that he could become a born again Christian. You see, that's the only purpose of the Gideons International is that it's the same as your church. Our objective is to win men, women, boys, and girls to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We do that first through our personal testimony, secondly by placing God's word in what we call the traffic lanes and streams of national life, in the hotel rooms, in the hospitals, jails, prisons, schools, universities, in all of these places, and we claim God's promise that his word will not return void, and it doesn't. This morning, as we share with you, I want, you to, I want to say this on the outset. This is not about the Gideons. We're not wonderful, but God's word is. And God uses it to change lives. In Luke chapter 15, beginning with verse 4, it says, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after that one which is lost until he finds it? Aren't you glad? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 90 
nine just persons who need no repentance. You see, that's a picture of the church and the Gideons working together to take the word of God into a world that is lost and dying without Christ. I want to express my appreciation to Pastor Gunn for allowing me to be here this morning and certainly to you for allowing me to share with you what God is doing. You see, it's always a joy to share with Bible-believing churches what God is doing through his word. You understand the power of his word, and it's a joy to share with you. You may say, well, you know, I don't want to get caught up in a lot of the numbers. Last year, the Gideons, on your behalf, placed 68 million scriptures in some 200 countries, territories, or possessions around the world. Since our beginning, we have now placed over 2.3 billion copies of the Word of God. To God be the glory. And you may say, well, how can we help? Well, first of all, you can pray. As Ron referred earlier, I'm a benefit of your prayers. Thank you. You didn't even know I was traveling. But God, even though you pray in a general way, God answers prayers specifically. And there were many situations where I needed the wisdom of God. I needed the safety of God. And so thank you for praying. Please don't stop. And then you have the opportunity, and as Ron also referred to, using the Gideon card program where we provide these cards free of charge to your church. You open it up, you send the card to the loved one to acknowledge them of your gift, and then you use the envelope and send your check or payment, whatever form that is, to the Gideons. My father loved to talk about Jesus. He was just an ordinary guy. But he loved to help people, and he loved to sh share his faith. My father was called to, be home, to go home with the Lord. There were 400 Bibles placed in his memory. Now, the hotel motel people tell us that a Bible placed in a hotel room has an average life of six years, and during that period of time has the potential of reaching 2,300 readers. As much as my father loved sharing his faith, if you multiply that out, he's now witnessing to over 960,000 people. I'm not sure he could ever have done that in his lifetime on this earth. But you see, God continues to use his witness. And so as you use that program, know that God's word will not return void. And then Ron also referred to the fact that at the close of the service, we'll be taking an offering that will be used 100% to purchase and place copies of God's word around the world. A Gideon representative was speaking in Florida. And following the service, the pastor said, why don't you come with me and let's greet the people as they leave. And as they were standing there, the pastor looked at the Gideon and he said, do you have any idea why I choose to support your ministry? Well, that's always an interesting question to a Gideon. He said, no, but I'd love to know. He said, well, it's like this. There was a young girl, she was a senior in high school, never gave her parents any trouble whatsoever. For some reason, she was taunted by her peers that she had missed something in all these years. He said, you, you need to have a date with a married man. For whatever reason, she caved, and she agreed to do that. Well, that afternoon, she went to the hotel. She got there first. She was given a key. She walked in. She opened the door, and she sat down on the bed. She looked over on the nightstand, and there was a Bible that had been placed by Gideon. She opened it up and started to read it. A few moments later, she heard the door open, and in walks this married man. It looked at her, and Conviction flooded him, and he said, young lady, we're about to make a terrible mistake. I need to take you back home to your family, and I need to go home to my wife. And that pastor, with tears rolling off of his cheeks, said, that young girl, she was my daughter. He said, I shudder to think what could have happened had that Bible not been in place. So she was no stranger to the word of God. She knew better. And yet she gave in. But thank God that his word was in place. 
She went on to become a missionary and serve God in another land. The power of God, the power of God's word, the working of the Holy Spirit. When all of these things come together, you see, it changes hearts and lives for eternity. Yet in 2 Corinthians 10, 16, Paul urges the Corinthians to preach the, re the gospel in the regions beyond you. Perhaps through a gift you've given has gone to a country like India, 87% Hindu, less than 3% are Christian. I don't know about your church. I don't know if you have Hindu people that come and visit or if you have Muslims. So many times they're not open to hearing the gospel, but they are open to receiving a free gift. A young girl by the name of Leela was attending grade school in the southern city of Trivandrum in India. She received a book in her very own language, Malayalam. She took it home and she showed it to her parents. She went in, she was so happy for you see, she had never had a book she could take home from school. And she wanted to read to them and show them how she had learned in school to read and how good she was at it. And her father said, no, you may not read that book. Those men may be trying to make a Christian out of you. I forbid you to read that book. You can imagine it broke the little girl's heart. It was such a special gift. And every place she went, she simply carried that New Testament with her. Sometimes children have a way of getting to our hearts, don't they? And her father realized this means something. And he said, honey, if it means that much to you, you may read the book. And she said, I did read it. And I want you to know that I have accepted Christ as my personal savior. But I also want you to know that because of my personal witness and the copy of God's word that you gave me, I have now been able to lead my entire family to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. What an awesome God we serve. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know, we get some testimonies back in that are just phenomenal. They're hard to believe. And yet when we hear them from the individual, we know that it's true. There was a man that was attending college studying engineering in Peru. Gideons went to his college, the university. They gave out testaments. He took his home, he read it, he got saved, and he thought, boy, this is wonderful. I need to share this with others. So he made a sign and he put it out in front of his house and said, free Bible lessons given by engineer. He thought if you put it that way, because a lot of people don't like to go to church, well, nobody came. One day it started raining really hard and his house was being flooded and he was doing everything he could to get the water out of the house, but he was losing the battle. He looked up and an ugly dog come running through the, his house and the only thing he took was his New Testament. And he ran after that dog and he chased the dog and he chased the dog and finally the dog ran into the hut of a witch doctor. He, he stopped, he said, there is no way I would go into that God forsaken place. He went back home and he wondered, you know, what if somebody comes now I don't have a copy of God's word. A couple of days later, he gets a knock on the door. He answered it, scared him to death. It was a witch doctor. And the witch doctor said, I read your sign. I want a Bible class. And he began to explain to him what happened and all of that. And the witch doctor said, oh, really? He said, did that little New Testament look like this? He said, it did. He said, well, there was an ugly dog that ran into my hut the other day, and this was in his mouth. And he was able to take that New Testament and lead that witch doctor to a saving knowledge of Christ. I had the privilege of being in Machacos, Kenya. And it's interesting there when we go to a school and the headmaster, he'll just, he'll ring a bell or he'll send people out and they'll cause an assembly in an open courtyard. 
And then they usually let us share, and we share with them how the people, the Christian people in the United States love them, and they provide these scriptures, and we're there to give them one free of charge. And so after we had given each of the students a New Testament, to our amazement, this headmaster stood up and he said, did everybody get one of these? Everybody. Teachers, helpers, did everybody get a copy of God's word? If you did, hold it up. And everybody held it up. And he said, now, listen, there will be no excuse at the day of judgment. I thought, wow, I come from a Christian nation. I would to God we could hear that in this country. And here are these kids, they don't have books. You go into a classroom, you look around, there are no books. Lessons are written on the board, and then they're erased. And this happened to be a very, very special gift, which reminds me of Kabizi. Kabizi was in school one day and the Gideons went there and they offered a free New Testament on your behalf. She looked around, everybody was taking one. She really wasn't interested. But she thought, well, I should just go along with everybody else and it is kind of attractive. So she took one. That afternoon she went home and in her bedroom she simply laid that New Testament on her dresser and she was gonna leave the house. The reason she was leaving the house that day is she was a prostitute and she was going out to work the streets. She's walking down the street, she heard a voice. Now listen, I don't know if she heard it with this ear or she heard it with this ear, <laughs> but the voice said, go back and read the book. She went back, she took the New Testament, she opened it up, not knowing much about the word of God, happened to open it to Acts. It says, there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. She knew she was lost. And there in her bedroom, she prayed and asked God to forgive her and asked Jesus to come into her heart. She left the house, this time not to work the streets, but she was walking down the street. She passed a little church. It must have been a Wednesday evening. They were having a prayer meeting. She walked up and she opened the door. And when she did, the door made a noise. And she saw these people that were praying. And one of her schoolmates looked up and said, Kabizi, it's you. Yeah. We've been praying for you, she said. I said, yep, I know that you have. I was saved just 15 minutes ago. I'm no longer a prostitute. Now I'm a part of the bride of Christ. What an opportunity. What a joy to hear people like that, people that are hopeless, people without Christ, people with no place to turn, not knowing what to do, receive a copy of God's word and everything becomes new. Gideon's, when we began organizing in Eastern Europe back in 1989, we had a flood of scriptures going into that country. And there was a lot of openness and yet there was a lot of misunderstanding. So Gideons in Ukraine went to a Navy base. And as they went, the commanding officer was extremely upset that the Gideons would come. But they had received permission from his commanding officer, so he couldn't do anything about it. So as the Gideons made the distribution, by the way, the reason this commanding officer was so upset, he was a devout communist. He would teach classes in atheism three times a week. So the Gideons went, they gave out the testaments, the recruits started reading it, and it was contrary to everything they had been taught. They had a lot of questions. The only place they knew to go and ask their questions was that commanding officer. Now this created a real problem for him. For you see, if he couldn't answer their questions, he would lose respect. They wouldn't follow him. With absolutely no interest in the Word of God, he started reading. Now, you know what happened. The Spirit of God started working on his heart. 
revealed to him that there is a God and that there is a Savior and that by receiving him, he could have eternal life. He started attending a Baptist church. They welcomed him. They helped him in his newfound faith. And later he was baptized into their fellowship. Then when the Gideons came to organize what we call a camp, this man became a member of the Gideons International and started distributing the same word that he was opposed to. Our God has a sense of humor, but our God has a plan. And his plan is that none should perish, but everyone should come to saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. One of our representatives traveling in Dodama, Tanzania, was approached by a pastor. Pastor heard that he was in town and said, look, I would love for you to come and share with my congregation what God's doing through your work. But I need for you to understand something. We are extremely poor. He said, in fact, I'm going to take two offerings because we're behind in our budget and it's just necessary. And our representative said, that's okay. We want your people to know how to pray for the Gideons. And maybe you've got a business professional man that's spiritually born again that wants to be a part of the Gideons. And so the service happened. Our representative spoke. He took his seat. And to his amazement, the pastor gets up. And he said, folks, I believe God would be pleased if we help these men in their mission. And so he arranged for a special basket to be placed on the altar table. And they started taking an offering. Now, I've taken offerings in Baptist churches before. I don't see a lot of people smiling. These people were smiling. They got up and they started making a line and they do this little African shuffle as they make their way to that basket and they put their money in and return to their seat. Smiling. <laughs> he noticed an elderly lady. She made her way to the front. He said she wasn't dressed quite as good as some of the others. And he noticed that everybody else had their money out and they were ready to place it in that basket. But her hand was empty. And the only thing she had of any value was a hat made out of some special material. And she took it off and placed it in that basket. Our representative said he was absolutely amazed that people who had so little were so willing to give. And then he noticed a young girl about 16 years old. He said she wasn't dressed as well as the other lady. And she made her way to that offering basket. There's nothing in her hand. There's nothing on her head. The only thing she had of any value were the shoes on her feet. And she took them off and she placed them in that basket and left that service barefooted. Christian friends, you and I will never know that type of sacrifice, not living in this nation. God has blessed us beyond what we can imagine. But you see, it's not about the size of her gift. It was about the condition of her heart. And she simply wanted to give what she had so that her friends, her family, would have an opportunity to come to Jesus. Jeremiah 17, 15 says, Behold, they say unto me, Where is the word of the Lord? Christian friends, there are people today in other lands, remote areas, that are asking, Where is this God? Where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now. Yeah, I'm not familiar with your congregation, and maybe you have been here for a long time. Maybe you're visiting today. But I can tell you this from my experience. I went to church often as a young person. I can remember one day the pastor came through, and he said, we're going to baptize. I think I was in the fourth grade. So we're going to baptize in a few weeks. How many in here want to be baptized? I looked around and everybody had their hand raised. What well, must be the thing to do. And I did. Problem was Christ wasn't in it. 
No one ever told me how to receive Christ as my personal Savior. I was baptized later on, recommitting my life, but I had nothing to recommit to. And it was later in my young adult life that I understood that the only way that I could receive eternal life and have a place in heaven was by receiving Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And I did. And I don't know about you, maybe some things are going on in your life that you need a Savior. Maybe you've been here and you thought, well, going to church, I've done my duty. Sorry, but that won't get it for you. There's only one way to receive a free gift of eternal life, and that's by accepting Christ as our Savior. Romans 10, 13 says, Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And 1 John 1, 12 says, But as many as received him, to, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. And just as we begin with the video, it's by faith, not of works, that we come to Christ. So Dr. Highsmith is going to be here at the front, and he'd be happy to receive you. Maybe you've been visiting, maybe you're already a believer, and you're looking for a church home. I would invite you to come and, and share with Dr. Highsmith as well. Would you join with me as we pray? Father, thank you for your written word. Thank you, Father, for the life, the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he came to this earth as a human, just like us. The difference is he never sinned. And, Father, we are sinners. And we ask that you forgive us. I pray for those that need to make a decision today through a very simple step of faith that you might lead them to confess their sins and to invite Jesus into their hearts. So, Father, we commit this service to you and everything that you've done and pray now that you will be glorified in Christ's name. Amen.